trouble. Well, pretty obvious. Woo! I was here at like 5 a.m. sitting outside his feet in a multiple in the black hoodie with a bunch of unmarked boxes. So I was a little more worried, but we made it here. So welcome to the uh, first ever uh, World Camp in Photo, which is really cool to say. Um, thank you for having me on here. Happy Halloween weekend, although I don't know why people celebrate like Halloween like every single day of the weekend. Uh, that they wouldn't come to the event, but that's cool. Uh, so thank you for coming out. Um, so these are just the opening remarks, and then we're going to get right into the presentations. Um, so first, uh, well first, um, my name is Anthony Bubble, and I'm one of the organizers uh, for the event. So if you really hate it, I'm the person you have to eat, come say. Um, so for, we have a few program changes, uh, which we just want to make you aware of. So Philip uh, Hoagley, who was speaking uh, during the, I think, fully 10 o'clock, uh, session, he will not be joining us. Um, and same for Basket Hardy, who is speaking later in the day. Both of them have family emergencies, so um, our thoughts are with them both. And finally, we, we blogged about it yesterday, so you may not have seen it. Uh, we added an academic panel, which is during the 11.20 to 12 o'clock slot, and that will be in room 239 which is the free room until the academic panel. Um, there is a post about it on our website. Uh, we'll also uh, tweet about it so you see exactly who's there. It's a, it's a group of um, very distinguished uh, professors and uh, instructional technologists throughout the Philadelphia area at all our wonderful colleges, including right here at Temple University. So um, check that out, feel free. Uh, another note is we were told by the security is to when you exit, uh, all for all here, when you're coming back in, make sure you have your name badges on, or they'll go through this ID thing with you, and it's kind of annoying, um, just so they know you're with us. Okay, um, we have some giveaways, which you may have heard of, that are, so for the ball press beta, uh, for a ball press golden ticket, as we like to call it, um, as well as a Headway 2.0 uh, license, uh, premium license, and so the way we're going to give those out is if you want to enter, you're not automatically entered uh, to win them. If you want to enter to win it, we're just going to raffle five each of them off. And what you want to do is at lunch, during the lunch break, you're going to find me at basically the entrance of Alter Hall, and I'm going to take your name and your email, and we need to give you a ticket. And then we'll announce the winner during the closing remarks. Okay, so that's how you will uh, enter those uh, giveaways. Uh, you have a, a map of where to get lunch as well as all the room numbers. The rooms are really easy to get to. If you go over here, straight up the stairs, and they're all kind of in the same area. And there's signs everywhere for them. The rooms are also marked uh, with work camp filling on them, so you can't miss them. Uh, as well as we have a lounge up there on the second floor, which we'll, we're calling kind of our genius lounge. Uh, if you want to kind of help people or be helped, just kind of go ahead and hang out up there. It's a nice little informal place with a nice view of the campus. So, if you have any questions about anything about today, you can find me, um, Anthony with the little green thing here, or Brad in the back, standing up. Okay, the cool guy. Um, okay. So you can find us, or anyone with a blue volunteer designation there, and you can find us and um, bother us, ask us anything at all, whatever. So, with that, we're gonna get straight into our first shared session, which will be in this room. All sessions after that will break off into the rooms upstairs uh, as per your schedule. So if you have any questions about where to go, just let me know. So first, uh, today, being at Temple University, it seems uh, very appropriate to have this presentation here. Um, it's going to be Manir Manhiwala. Did I say that correctly? Okay. And uh, Manoj uh, Chaco. And so they're going to talk about um, basically uh, the role of open source software and what they've done with the MIS department here. Manir is the chairman of the MIS department as well as the um, executive director of the you know, Institute of Business and Information Technology here at Temple University. Um, so he's going to tell you pretty much he's been the man to kind of lead this charge for open source software in the department, scrapping Blackboard, and it's uh, a really wonderful story. So. Without further ado, Mr. Uh, or Doctor, I should say, Manir Manhiwala. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, 
particular pleasure to be here because, uh, in case Anthony hasn't told you yet, he's our graduate, so uh, we're very proud of him. And we use him as, as a role model. Um, I'd like to welcome all of you here on behalf of Temple University and the Flop Fox School of Business. Uh, we are very excited to, uh, to welcome the WordPress community here, um, hopefully the first of, of many such events. And uh, what I hope to do is um, today lead you down a journey. Um, I come from a very different world, um, an academic, you know, academic. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Boring. Uh, there's sometimes resistance to change, uh, kind of like doing things our own way. Uh, so we started a very interesting journey and uh, there have been several people who have been uh, partners uh, with me on this journey. Uh, one of the partners today is, uh, is Manoj Charco. So Manoj, Manoj, put your hand. Um, he's not going to doing, be, be doing any of the topic. Uh, he's not going to do any of the talking today. Uh, I'm the pretty faithful. He's the one who does all the, all the work. <laughs> um, but there have been many other partners, but I won't, since they're not here, I won't go into those details. So, so what's the journey? Uh, the journey is, we're all interested in WordPress, but WordPress is also a paradigm, it's a way of thinking. And you all know that, you know, it's kind of, so to speak, preaching to the fire. Uh, but that paradigm and that way of thinking has helped us reimagine, hence the title, of how uh, we use technology in higher education. And what we are doing in my department is essentially using that paradigm to change everything, not just how we deliver education, uh, but also how the content that we have in our educational program, uh, how we operate on a day-to-day -day basis, how we engage with each other. So let me show you some pieces of that journey. <laughs> so, you all know this, the Web 2.0 way of thinking, the open source way of thinking. Uh, so just think of this as a refresher. It's supposed to be highly collaborative, uh, peer reviewed, supposed to be very open. No hierarchy, be completely flat, uh, be interactive, share, partner. Uh, all of those things that are obvious to the open source community, to people who use WordPress who kind of buy into that, uh, uh, buy into that paradigm. But that's a university. Courses are their own universe. Um, hierarchies of disciplines, departments, Structures are all uh, continuously reinforced. All of you have had some kind of a close encounter with the university. Uh, in the United States, they're amazingly similar. You know, there's a registrar's office that has to go through some humiliating period when something goes wrong, or some humiliation with uh, your grades, or uh, you have to go to one class in which the content overlaps another class, nobody really cares, everybody wants to do their own thing. Um, there is no way for people to engage with each other across courses, uh, even in the same department, sometimes with the faculty in adjacent offices, uh, let alone across departments or, or across colleges. Uh, and the individual, you know, most of us take this for granted, we don't even question it. The individual is pretty much ignored. You're basically a little cog that has to go through the university uh, the university process and you sort of beg, plead, uh, drive your way through that um, in terms of just getting your degree and getting up. Well, a university doesn't have to be like that. It can be, it can be very different. So, if you take that idea, um, and I love PowerPoint, especially PowerPoint 2010. Uh, uh, this guy is so cool. Uh, if you take those ideas, so that's very, you know, that's a 50,000 foot view. You take those ideas and say, okay, what, is, what does it mean specifically? Uh, and I'm shamelessly borrowing the, the, Wired magazine, uh, the Wired magazine metaphor, is the concept of a website, the concept of portals, the concept of resumes, the concept of standalone courses, definitely the concept of a course management system and a learning management system. Uh, I think those are all obsolete concepts. Uh, we have to look at different ways of achieving 
some of these underlying goals that are hidden under these concepts. Uh, clearly, we need a course because you know, universities are about learning, but a course may not necessarily be the best <coughs> way of achieving that. So, since I'm copying Wired magazine, um, what's the future? We see the future as a series of social networks, uh, related document repositories, uh, connected by common interest, in which knowledge is aggregated and tools that encourage interaction. Now, some of you are WordPress experts. You kind of know that's what WordPress does. Um, so that's why we uh, jumped on it. And that's what we think is the future. Content management, information sharing, an extensible open architecture and social media. And what we've tried to do over the past, I guess now two years, is think through what all of this means in contrast to what we don't want to be and where we want to go, and uh, try and find very specific solutions, ideas, instantiations for achieving that. So what I'm going to do for the next uh, 10 minutes or so is walk you through a series of screen prints I don't have the guts to do a live demo for something that's wrong. Um, for some of you are already on your laptops. Uh, uh, feel free to go to our site and, and check it out. Our site is uh, the word community.mis.temple.edu. So uh, here's our home page. Big deal, it just looks like any other home page, although we think it looks very pretty, but that's because we look at it every day. Um, it has to look pretty. Uh, for us, one of the big things, for some of you now getting into some of the more technical details, one of the big things was we moved to WordPress 3 over the summer, and uh, we were stuck with the whole theming issue. How do you write themes and so on? And we finally decided that we don't want to be in the theme writing business, uh, so we jumped to this fantastic tool called StudioPress that has enabled us to not be in the theme business, but just to focus on our content. So, what's interesting about this site, if you think of a way a university is structured, a university has different kinds of content and different kinds of activities. So what you see here is what I would call institutional content. As a department of MIS, we have an obligation to provide some information to prospective students, to uh, provide information about our programs, to provide information to our current students, or things you would expect. Uh, so this part of WordPress is well known not that exciting, but, but it works really well, the content management part. So we use it primarily for this portion as a content management tool. What's interesting is, is because it's no longer a website and it's a content management system, we can decentralize the management of the content. So there is some person in our department who's responsible for maintaining information for prospective students. We decentralize that part and that person can just focus on that. Okay, that's not that exciting part but it works well. Uh, and here's an example of our institutional content. More exciting is all in educational institutions have faculty. And faculty, think back to the idea that um, we want to be flat and we want to be more individual. Faculty have content that they want to share, that they need to share. So each faculty in our department has a blog using WordPress terminology. Uh, in which they can share information about their research, their biography, their courses, and so on. Kind of a, if you think it through, it's a very obvious use of the blogging platform. But it's interesting from an institutional perspective is that if all the faculty have these, then you can do some interesting things with aggregation. So, um, that's faculty from an individual perspective. What about students? Well, students Having a student blog, you can go to WordPress.com and create your own blog. That, from an institutional perspective, is not that interesting. But what's our obligation to students as a, as an as a institution of higher education is to place them, help them get jobs. So the way we conceptualize the student blog is as an e-portfolio. And all of our students essentially create a blog, i.e. an e-portfolio, and this is our aggregation site for all their e-portfolios, and we use this site, uh, we push this site to employers so that they can, for example, they want to find a specific type of student, they will select a category, and then this is a standard RSS feed for what the students are doing. And what you see here is an example of a student portfolio. What would they have on the portfolio? 
very obvious things, such as an elect electronic version of their resume, not a big deal. But now, because this is a, a, an interactive platform, they can have examples of their work, the portfolio concept. So, and more importantly, the portfolio allows them to create their own digital identity, their own image on, on the internet that they control, uh, and they will be able to control long after they graduate, uh, so we give them permanent accounts, and they can keep updating it as time goes by. And where we see this fitting in is, it's not Facebook, because we don't want the drunk pictures of our students. <laughs> they can keep those on Facebook, that's Facebook is good for that. Um, it's not LinkedIn, because LinkedIn is very useful because of extremely structured. Uh, but because it's structured, there are certain things you can't do on LinkedIn, such as be more creative in terms of showing your projects, showing your portfolios. So we see this fitting right in between uh, a very structured LinkedIn and the very unstructured uh, Facebook world. So that's individual, we talked about faculty, we talked about students from an e-portfolio perspective. Now when you have all of these things, you can do some fantastic things in aggregation. So what's this bunch of text that you see there? Well, if all faculty have their own blogs and they list their research, this is a big problem for all university administrators. Uh, or in general, is faculty are their own universe, they produce research, but it's very hard to aggregate and know what that research is. So this is just a simple RSS aggregation of all the faculty pages. And what you see there are various research projects that they worked on, and some of you who know WordPress well know this is incredibly easy to do. Uh, but in a university context, this is incredibly hard to achieve. Uh, why? Because faculty don't want to cooperate with any kind of a, a top-down implementation to gather information. So this is completely bottom-up. You maintain your own blog, you put your research up on your blog, and this just grabs it, scrapes it off the blog, and you have it there uh, in an aggregated format. And you can do other interesting things with the tax blog. The tax blog will instantly tell you, if you go to our department page, of what our interests are. And it's a very quick, short form, powerful way of finding out what our research expertise is. Okay, well, we talked about individuals, faculty, we talked about individual students. Obviously, one of the bigger missions of a university are courses. So, not surprisingly, we reimagined courses also as a series of blogs. Here, I'm showing you uh, the course I'm teaching this semester. And most of it is sort of obvious what you would expect to see in a course. I don't know if this is big enough to see, but I have my schedule up here, I have my assignments up here, I have uh, uh, my grading information here, there's a list of my guest speakers. Uh, there's nothing that exciting about how this was implemented in the sense that these are just pages uh, using WordPress terminology. What is exciting is because this is an open platform uh, and it's a content management system, uh, it's not top down, every student in my class is also an author. So, what you see here in this post is not something I'm saying, this is a student post. And part of the requirement of the class is, you know, some of you have heard this term before, the concept of open innovation or co-creation. Well, this class is an example of co-creation is uh, I post the student post. The student post, they have to, they are greatly dependent on it. Um, but, I haven't had any trouble getting the students Post because in this world there is no hierarchy. Their post is as valuable as mine and we rate everything. So uh, uh, sometimes my post gets the highest rating, sometimes another student's post gets the highest rating. And then the other advantage of this platform is, is everything you can comment on. So I'll go in and comment on what the students are saying or they'll go in and comment on what I'm saying. Uh, you still need some structure because ultimately even though we are practicing co-creation, I still have to assign grades, you know, the students can't assign their own grades, um, which they'd like to. Um, so some parts of the, uh, of the class are closed, uh, such as the grade book, for example. I only can have access to it. Uh, but other parts of the course are completely open. So that's the third major piece of the university. We think of a university as a series of individuals and as a series of types of content. So faculty and students, how you reimagine them. Um, institutional content such as 
which program you should select, and then courses. The most important part of the university is the notion of the community. And what you see here is the bottom part of our homepage. So what I showed you when we started on this journey, this was the top of our homepage, which is mostly the institutional content. What you see on the right hand side are the classes, uh, and then all of these are just various RSS feeds from different parts of our site. And then you can see our programs and so on. The bottom of this page is really our community. And this has probably been the most successful thing we've tried in the last two years, is because everything is open, everybody knows what's going on. We are all incredibly social creatures, and we are all incredibly curious about what other people are doing. And that curiosity can be leveraged to create a fantastic sense of community. Um, because you know what other people are doing, you can strike up a conversation with them. Oh, you said this. Uh, you find out what their interests are, and you actually, the whole vision, the magic of uh, having a sense of shared ownership over a community can be achieved by something very simple, by making things completely visible. So, everything that everybody does is completely visible through this site-wide activity uh, view. Um, you can see who's online, you can see who's active, and, and so on. And then you can go into specific people and see what they're doing. Uh, so these are very Facebook-like features, but, so you would imagine, you would think, why would they fit in here? Well, we all belong to different communities. So the way we conceptualize is that this is the, you have a work community, you have a social community. This is sort of in between. This is your uh, student community, this is your college community, and certain things you would say here, you wouldn't necessarily say on Facebook. There are certain things you would say on Facebook that you should definitely not say here. So, um, but, it's a, it was a gap that nobody even knew existed until we started trying it. And it was the easiest feature, so to speak, for us to sell it probably. Okay, I'll give you one more example, then I'll stop. How do you put it all together in terms of content? Uh, how do you integrate this idea of institutional content, which are courses and program information, uh, the notion of a community and individual? You won't be able to read the text and don't even bother. Um, this is an example from last semester. Uh, many of you are from the local area or from this region, you know about uh, Commerce Bank being bought from TD Bank. So uh, when they bought, when the integration was occurring, there was a problem with the ATM machines. Some of you have accounts with Commerce slash TD Bank know about them. If people couldn't get their money out, uh, there was an integration problem. When I was teaching a class in information systems integration, driving in to work, I hear about people can't get their money out, they're lying. Uh, oh, that's a great thing for me to write about in my, uh, in my course page. So I write, up, I write about uh, that uh, incident, and I use it as an example of a of, of problem of integration. Okay. It was opportunistic. That's not that exciting. Um, so the first post, or the first comment in reaction to that post was um, a a drone from, a customer service drone from TD Bank who left a customer service message because they'd hired somebody to protect that image. So they left a customer service message on my last block. <laughs> who cares, right? One university, one professor, one class is why would TD Bank even bother to leave a customer service message? But they did. What is that? What is the realization that occurs to all the students in the class? The world is their stage. One university, one professor, one class, but the world is your stage. That was very exciting for the students to realize. So, after that, this is the drone message, basically saying we've been having customer service problems, blah, 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 and we're trying to fix it. After that, we had a series of comments from students, because they suddenly realized whatever they said, somebody might actually read. And uh, that was very exciting for me. Then, I was walking down the hallway and our administrative assistant realized from the site-wide activity that we were talking about TD Bank, she has an opinion of the TD Bank, she had an account at Commerce. So I said, oh, don't tell me, just write on here. Everything is open, so she writes something on there. So then the students go and they see her name, they can actually have a conversation with her in the hallway about what's going on with uh, TD Bank. And one of our other professors says, well, you're wrong about something. I said, fine, I don't care. Just, just 
respond to my post. Now the students love it when the professors fight. Uh, <laughs> and actually it's all good from my perspective too. So the openness, the flatness, the interactivity is what enabled that sense of community. Now this was a series of fortunate coincidences. Um, you know, maybe we can even skip the script I don't know. Anyway. So to summarize, we think this future of a series of social networks uh, is realizable, which are these, these communities that we belong to. The related document repositories are the different blogs that people uh, can maintain, uh, which can be connected through that common interest. Uh, common interest might be um, student, faculty relationship, uh, course relationship, and so on. And then the concept of aggregation, the idea of just RSS feed is so powerful that you can quickly aggregate. And then tools such as BuddyPress, uh, with the site-wide activity and the commenting and so on, uh, that encourage interaction. So that's what we've done so far in terms of moving forward. Uh, we realized that there were certain tools that were not available in the WordPress world. So uh, we started writing our own plugins. We are just very close to releasing a great book plugin, which we feel is a critical success factor to be able to use these tools. Uh, we've been working on it, well, Manoj has been working on it for a long time. And uh, it has a, a bunch of uh, uh, very easy to use features, and it is uh, perfectly compliant, if you know what that means. Um, if you know what it means, you know why it's important. And we hope to work with other people. Um, if you're a plugin developer, we have 50 million ideas that we'd love to collaborate with you on. Uh, that would accelerate what we are trying to do. We buy into the open source platform. We, whatever we make, we're going to give away. Whatever we have is available to anybody else. Uh, but we are hoping that you do the same. You collaborate with us, partner with us, uh, spread the word, uh, and break down the barriers in higher education. So thank you very much. Um, I don't know if we have time for questions. I was wondering, uh, so this is just one part of a couple of larger, you know, web infrastructure. How does that work going? Can you export this to the different departments? Because when you come in from temple.edu, you don't see any of this, right? So all the different schools have all the different problems. Can you then migrate this or, you know, include other people? Or are you guys just keeping this, which I see the biggest problem with temple and all the university sites? Uh, I think I think that's a fantastic question. We see ourselves as a virus, so uh, <laughs> uh, and we are helping other departments uh, at Temple uh, if they want our help um, to do the same. And uh, and in uh, and Temple is way more enlightened than other universities. Because our site basically breaks all of university guidelines, but nobody came and told us you have to shut it down. So they realized they realized that there is some value here. Um, universities have more stringent requirements. Uh, they have security requirements. They have legal obligations. So Temple sees us as a pilot, and um, so you know, we have a good relationship with the, with the Central Computer Services people, and they see us as a pilot, and we've been successful, and we think that the pilot will continue. Expand, uh, which is one university view. The view that I'm even more excited about is this paradigm. You know, why stop at one university? Is why can't my department directly connect to some other department that is doing the same thing? Um, so I think everything is possible, and I think we are at. Uh, you know, this is the wild, wild west. I think it, everything is possible, and I think uh, there is enough momentum in terms of what everybody else in this room has already done with the WordPress community and the open source community and what we're doing to actually move it forward. Yes, uh, do you have Blackboard anywhere else than Temple University? Uh, and if Blackboard has been dismantled, what has been your cost savings as a result? Uh, we're not there yet. But what I will tell you is that Temple was the, I don't know if it still is, but Temple was the largest user of Blackboard um, when it first came on the scene. We were the, one of the earliest adopters, and, and my school, the business school, was the earliest adopter in the university. Uh, and Blackboard was a fantastic tool 10 years ago. In my view, it is basically outlived its usefulness. Uh, but Temple is still a very heavy user of Blackboard, um, and probably will continue to be so. You know, it's a technology life cycle. 
uh, technologies come and go, I think this technology makes more sense. And we'll probably see a, an increase of use of these kinds of technologies. And we'll probably see a decrease of use in, uh, in others. But it'll be a cycle. It's not going to it's not going to turn immediately. It takes time to persuade people. It takes time to learn. But the biggest challenge we've had uh, in terms of our implementation is, is not the, the mechanics of using these tools. They're easy to use. Is they're a paradigm change. It's a different way of thinking, and some professors don't want to change. Or they don't know how to change. It's not that they're evil people. They don't know how to change. Yes, sir. Um. I work for an independent school in New Jersey. We're pre-K through 12. And I think one of the things that we've seen um, is that a lot of times, in five, 10 years ago, we were looking to higher education and saying, okay, what do we need to do to prepare? But what we got caught up in is, was all the costs and trying to keep up. So the open source software, whether it's Moodle, whether it's WordPress, any of those things came to us as kind of like this bright light of doing all of these things at very little cost. And what we've had happen is that we've taken some of the, the ideas that you're doing, taking social media, student blogging, using that, and working with the kids in, you know, from middle school up through high school. And I think what you're going to end up seeing is you're going to end up seeing students coming to you in higher ed now, having done this in the K-12 environment, and, you know, pushing for more of that in what you're doing. We took the same thing you did by taking something small, the virus. And I think what people need to see is a, to answer the gentleman's question before, I think people what need, they need to see is a, um, is a proof of concept, something that can show that this can work so that you can make that larger shift in, in large institutions. Start small and build from there. Yeah, it actually makes a lot of sense because large institutions like us, uh, it's a cycle of life. We made heavy investments in something 10 years ago that smaller institutions were unable to do so. Now we're stuck with those heavy investments. Mm -hmm. so smaller institutions have more of the luxury of being more agile and changing. Um, so uh, I review this very philosophically. I think that it's a, uh, you just have to put your best, best foot forward and you know, good things will happen automatically. Or sometimes you have to push people. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, just a quick announcement. The rest of the sessions uh, up until this afternoon will be taking, taking place upstairs. We go back up the stairs we came in on, past the registration booth, and to the left there's the stairs. Go up there, and all the, uh, the four separate rooms will be up there, and they're marked. Um, and also, the uh, Philip Copley has been replaced in the Springsteen 1 track. Um, it's actually going to be Chris Cochran giving a presentation on thesis to Genesis. Um, so if you're working with thesis and you want to look at some other options that are out there, um, that would be a good one for you. So, that's it.